Hello Summoners welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today I'll be going over the 10 biggest mistakes that people make in low elo. Practicing mechanics is all based on how much you play the game, and I can't help you with that, that one's all up to you. But when it comes to decision making, we've got a pretty teachable subject. So with some help of some of the best league players in the world, this video was made to help you stop from taking your own LP. If you like what you see in this video, make sure to check out ProGuides.com. We're working on guides like this for every single champion, adding on to our already huge list of over 500 masterclass courses put together by top level pros and streamers. A pro account only costs $9.99 a month, and since we now only bill monthly, you can cancel anytime you want. That's already a pretty good deal, but to sweeten it even more, we decided that we're gonna be doing RP giveaways for subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a nice little bag of 11,525 RP. Entering just takes three quick steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for a pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username in the comment section below. You won't find a better deal anywhere, so what are you waiting for? Go pro now. All right, let's get on with the list of mistakes. Number one, not playing the vision game. The very first thing is not playing the vision game. Most people think that the responsibility of getting vision for the team is all on the support, and that's just not the case. Yeah, they have their support item and all, but playing around vision starts when the laning phase does. This is why so many champs uh, are considered OP lane bullies like Jace and Caitlyn typically have relatively low win rates and low elo, even in their most OP metas. Most people just shove in without getting vision, overextend, die to ganks, and end up in an unplayable lane. As the game moves on, the vision control game gets even more complex. You need good setup around objective fights, and while supports do have that aforementioned ward item, it's not all up to them. The rest of the team needs to help too. This doesn't mean just using your trinket. Buying control wards is an important thing that many players just pass on these days. As the game drags on, the stats that you get from components means less and less, and you get way more value out of denying vision with a control ward. This value goes up exponentially as more teammates buy them, since you can blanket an entire area in vision for your team while denying the enemy team their own. This is the easiest way to win when ahead. By choking out vision, you're making it more difficult for the enemy team to know what lanes you're rotating to, whether or not your team is waiting to catch them from a bush, or if the team is burning down Baron. Number 2. Wave Management the second thing is poor wave management. This is an important skill to level up that actually plays a part in all parts of the game, not just the laning phase, so you don't really want to be lacking here. Early on, good wave management sets you up for success, and when you're the weaker laner, they can make the lane playable. When you're stronger, it will give you a no-risk, high-reward way of winning the lane via farm and denying your opponent's CS without opening you up to enemy jungle ganks. As the game goes on, having good wave management can actually play a big part in how well your team pressures on the map, since stacked up minion waves can basically serve as a split pushing teammate. I could go on and on about the details of wave management all day. In fact, we already have an entire video dedicated to just that, so if you want to really master the skill, go check that out. Number 3. Laning like it's 1v1 Next thing is playing the game like it's a 1v1, or in the case of bot lane, a 2v2. This is a pretty simple thing to explain, but autopiloting and just assuming that you're locked into your matchup is a great way to lose games. Take Kate as an example. She's only strong in lane because her oppressive poking playstyle lets you win the war of attrition. So, if you die to ganks, you lose all the pressure that you've been building up, and become really susceptible to being all in by the rest of the lane. You have to look at the other matchups in the game. If the enemy mid laner has Pryo, and the enemy jungler is a high pressure early game champion, while yours is a farming one, you probably need to play Freeze. Of course, this point applies to junglers as well. So many junglers think that having a good 1v1 matchup means that they must contest Scuttle Crab and invade the enemy jungle. But if the enemy laners have Pryo, it's on you to play around that, rather than just die and then play your team. Number 4. Not Farming Next up, an issue that you do not want to have is just not farming. This definitely is a big problem in lower elo, but honestly, it seems like people are kind of just worse at farming even the upper ranks the last few seasons. And the thing is, this is probably the easiest mistake on the list to avoid, so it's a shame that so many people make it. This starts in laning phase. It's okay to be aggressive, but your priority should almost always be to secure CS over for going for trades. Unless it's a really free trade that's going to put you in the driver's seat. The concept of keeping up your farm shouldn't end with the laning phase does, either. It's all just too common to see teams randomly group up and play ARAM for a couple of minutes, just for it to amount to nothing. All the wild minions are dying in side lanes, with tons of gold and XP vanishing into the ether. Imagine you let the other 9 bozos in the game sit mid while you're the one soaking up all that side lane farm. The result is you end up massively ahead of everyone else in the game. Number 5. Bad Back Timings This one is a bit more dynamic. So many people mess up their back timings, me included sometimes. Even if you have really good mechanics for your rank, having bad tempo can completely kill any lead that you're trying to generate. In the laning phase, the key points is understanding not just your champion's power spikes, but also your opponent's, and how you need to play around that. Pick a top lane matchups like Jace vs Camille. 
Jace wants to recall on 1100 gold for Serrated Dirk, while Camille is fine going back as soon as she gets 700 for Sheen. Assuming her both CSing the same, Camille has a big advantage if she goes back the second she gets the Sheen, since she probably has a pretty decent spike, and Jace can't really do much for a couple of waves. Again, this is another point that doesn't just apply to laners. Junglers that stay on the map too long don't realize how big of an issue they are for their team. What if the enemy jungler resets and buys items, but you meander on the map for too long and your camps respawn? Most people just go for a reclare without realizing how bad this is. For the next minute and a half or so, you'll pretty much be forced to avoid fights that may otherwise be doable simply because of an item disadvantage. Of course, back timing has a lot to do with more than just the early game. It's really important for objective control as well. If you're 100 gold from a huge spike and Dragon is up in 45 seconds, you better sprint down the lane and farm a wave. That way you can make it to a fight in time without costing the drink. The later the game goes, the more it matters. There's a pretty common tactic in high elo to blitz down Baron or Dragon if the enemy is seen recalling. Vince damage is so high at this point that you'll kill the objective before the person that recalled can even make it back from base. Number 6. Overseeing after a kill. Okay, this is really just a sub point from the last entry, but it's such a specific issue that we're giving it its own spot. If you learn anything from this video, please, please stop overstaying after you get kills. Imagine if you get an early kill in lane, you're oom, but don't really have enough time to go back for a big item like Noon Quiver or Lost Chapter. So you just sit in lane, pushing to hit plates that you can never break at this point. Your opponent comes back, which is a single small component like Amp Tome or Longsword. From this point on, you're the one playing the losing lane. Because you're oom um and down an item, your foe is able to dictate the lane. You start losing out on farm, and you can never find the right time to go back because they keep crashing the wave into the tower, and you don't want to lose CS for free. This cycle is so, so common, but it's so easy to break. As soon as you get a kill, if you can crash the wave, do it. Sometimes you can't, and that sucks, but you just have to leave it and go back anyway. It's better to go back, buy more items in your foe, and come back with full HP and mana, so that way you can continue running the lane. Whatever minions that you lose due to a bad wave state will probably be made up by your item advantage over the next few minutes. Number 7. Bad Builds Okay, now let's talk about builds. Both rune pages and items are something that a lot of people get wrong. This range from the common misconceptions to downright delusional. Sometimes it's just people don't understand the situational items. Other times, it's somebody arguing that AP is actually the right way to play affiliates. Yeah, I really saw that. Yes, it was on Reddit. No, Reddit is not a good place to learn League. That's what ProGuides.com is for, or this YouTube channel for that matter. Anyway, aside from what we provide, there are some really good stat websites out there that can help. Everyone has a preference, but LOL Analytics gets my personal endorsement. The way it breaks down stuff is nice, and you can really get nitty gritty about all types of stuff. It can take a lot of playing around with it to really understand it all, but once you do, it's a great tool to learn what builds to go with. Number 8. Playing around losing lanes. Alright, true or false? If a lane is losing, then it's a jungler's job to bail them out. Contrary to what people may seem to think, the answer is actually false. Look, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying to completely ignore your struggling teammates all the time. If the gap isn't that big yet and you can turn the lane around or at least stop the bleeding, do it. But if your top laner is already 0-4-0 at 10 minutes and you go up there to try to save the day, you're not going to do too much for your team. You're pretty much always better off playing around lanes that are already winning. This is just complete common sense. For one, fed enough enemy laners can usually 1v2 or 2v3 fights with ease. And if the enemy jungler shows up, now you'll just be putting them ahead as well. When playing around your winning lanes, it's always a good strat, even if you can't actually gank to get kills. Just playing near them makes it so the enemy jungler can't show up and shut them down. Number 9. Bad Roam Timers Junglers aren't the only ones that can make ganks happen. The next big mistake that you can see a ton in the lower ranks is probably people going for bad roams. The concept of roaming seems simple enough, but you'd be surprised how many ways people can mess it up. For one, you have to get the right timing. As a mid laner, it's pretty easy to grasp. If you clear a wave and roam right as the next wave is making its way into the lane, you're guaranteed to miss out on the farm. The only champions that excel at roaming are those that are good at hard shoving waves quickly, giving them a big window to work with. But what about supports? This is where things get a lot trickier, because you're leaving your ADC to 1v2. You need to understand really well what the consequences are going to be. Imagine that you can get a double kill bot lane with both kills going to the ADC. With such a big lead, you'd think it's time to help the rest of the map. That's what good supports do, right? But leaving your ADC to 1v2 for 2 minutes is just a really great way to let the enemy ADC farm back up, while your ADC is being denied even walking into XP range. Remember our last point, play around winning lanes. The same can be applied to roams. Something else to consider for finding the right time to roam is yet another one of the previous points, recall timers. 
Say you have a small lead in lane, and your opponent is forced to go back. If you use a recall to go for a roam, and that roam doesn't really result in any gains, well, your opponent is going to come back to lane, get free farm, and probably take a plate, all the while you're resetting. In short, roaming is a double-edged sword. Pull off roams well, and your entire team ends up ahead. Do it wrong, and you end up behind for no reason. Number 10. Not dodging enough. And lastly, to round out our list, we actually have a mistake that has nothing to do with gameplay at all. Not nearly people are dodging games. I am not one of those people. If a game looks like it's going to be guaranteed from select, I'm not going to bother playing it out. Look, I don't care if I'm in promos. If it's a free loss either way, I'd rather not lose my MMR too, as well as my insanity. Riot has made it a bit more punishing to dodge games in recent seasons, since 3 dodges in a day can give you a 24 hour timeout. I personally think this is a bit dumb, but it's what we have to work with. Either way, use those first 2 dodges well, whether you have teammates flaming each other on select, or you have the most troll draft of all time, trust me. You'll have a much better mental for the rest of the day if you take the minus 3 over playing 15 minutes of Hell Simulator just to lose 20 plus. And that about wraps things up for our 10 of the biggest mistakes that people make in low elo. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see more from us, head over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content by pros like 4JJ, Doublelift, and General Sniper for you to access. And now we're even working on pushing out guides for every single champion. All of that for just $9.99. And that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best that you'll find anywhere on the market. And with the Pro Guide sub, you'll even get a discounted rate with them. Trust me, the amount of time that you'll save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything that they have to teach you. And of course, there's also that sweet, sweet RP giveaway. Again, the link for that site is down in the description box below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. But until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.